Hello all. My name is Harish Subramanian and uh, I want to welcome all of you to this uh, webinar brought to you jointly by uh, Great Learning and uh, Sensor Technologies. To introduce myself, I'm the uh, program director for our postgraduate program in Big Data Analytics. And uh, we have a very special guest with us today, somebody who's been a friend of the program and, and has uh, guided, uh, guided us through our uh, you know, through the evolution of this program, Dr. Ullas Nambiar, uh, who's the VP and uh, uh, of technology and, and head of Zen Labs, which is the, the innovation uh, wing of Sensor Technologies. Uh, obviously, I'll let uh, Ullas introduce himself in, in a moment. But uh, before this, Ullas was the AVP of data science at Mintra, the head of analytics at EMC, and a scientist at IBM Research, uh, and brings a vast amount of experience in technology innovation. Um, he's also earned his PhD in computer science from uh, Arizona State University. And, uh, and thank you, Lars, for uh, joining us. Uh, Thanks to Great Learning and Harish for setting up this opportunity to share my understanding of data science and how uh, data scientists are impacting uh, technology offerings in the services as well as product companies of today. So um, with that, I'll just slide, quickly take you through a few slides that I have. And if you notice, I have put the title of this particular deck as the art of data science. And uh, pretty much uh, that should convey to you that, well, sci the science itself is science. Data science itself is a scientific domain. There is a lot of nuances involved in being a great data scientist. It is not the science that is um, the art by itself, it is the way you become a scientist that is more artistic than scientific, in my view. And with that, uh, I, I'll take you to what uh, I think truly a data scientist is supposed to be doing. So, to put things in perspective, uh, when uh, a company hires a data scientist, they ask from that individual, from him or her, essentially is to take all the data that the company has, whether it is internal or external data, put them all together. It, typically in large organizations, you have lots of data uh, which has um, created over a period of time, and you have data systems which are typically built for a particular use case in the organization. So they don't usually talk to each other. And this could be uh, by reason, by design, or this could be the fact that as the company evolved, you built new systems in place uh, for new offerings that you have. So it could be you started out with a simple uh, HR and payroll and then you added on other uh, systems to take care of uh, IT and for customer um, sort of uh, feedback and customer uh, support and then the entire offering and the life cycle maintenance. So all the systems slowly, slowly keep evolving. And what happens is all the information that you need is sitting in these silos. So typically what you really is expected from a data science team is that they would go back, look at all the data that is there, uh, work in conjunction with the, the, the business intelligence, BI, or the data warehousing team, get all the data together, pre-process it, make it ready for uh, analysis, which in this particular uh, figure I have called data mining, which is uh, a better term to use than analytics. And then from that extract information, typically called actionable insights, which is what the business wants from the entire exercise. And this is not a one-time exercise. It is cyclical in nature. So once you get some information out, once you get some insight, you'd actually throw the insight back into your system and you create more information and more insights out of that. And so this is it's a continuous process, uh, if you were to ask me. So in the early stages, you will have some insights. Those insights will give you more ideas and you'll go back and relook at the data that you have. So that's typically the life cycle of going from data to knowledge and to actionable insights. And if you were to ask what makes a good data scientist or what is data science, and typically uh, a few years back, I think 2015, uh, it was proclaimed data scientist was the, the job of the century of sorts. The people were all looking for data scientists. But data science itself is not a single discipline. It is multidisciplinary in nature. If you look at this particular deck, which I like a lot, it expresses what data science is all about. And if you are looking for somebody who is a true data scientist, you don't expect them to know 
everything that is in this particular deck. So um, you, as a scientist um, or a data science team, I would rather call, the data science team should be part of a lot of the activities that a business is doing. So it should allow the business to understand what the strategy is, how to set the strategy, what is the domain they're active in, how to communicate the findings with the customers and their uh, partners and vendors, right? What is it that, is that they don't know already is to be known from the information they have, right? So this is the outer layer. This is what exactly the outcomes that a data science team gives. But how does how do you build a data science team? What components or what uh, technologies form a data science team? And when I say data science team, it is a bunch of individuals who would have one or many of these skills. So you, as a good data science team, will have people with machine learning skills. That's a given. You need machine learning because you have a lot of data, you have to extract insights from them, and the easy way to do that is machine learning. But you also have people who would know how to store and process the data. So database and data management systems are key to data science. So whether you talk about big data systems or your traditional data management systems like uh, relational databases, both are key to building uh, a good data science offering. So a, a good data science team will have people who have understanding of both the machine learning algorithms, but also the ability to collect the data, process it, and make it ready for use by, by the algorithms. So these two are uh, critical in my view. And then there are other pieces, right? So once you extract the data and extract the insights, you want to show those insights to people who are not as tech savvy as you are. So you need to actually visualize them in a way the business can, customer, the business, the executives can understand. So visualizations form a critical component of a data science team. You need to have great visualization skills. And, and by visualization, it is simply not just showing a chart, it is the ability to communicate. So there is a whole communication aspect, but great visualization, uh, as they say, an image is equal to a thousand words. So the great visualizations come in as part of a good data science team. So I, this is something not everybody has, but a great, great visualization is something that one of your team members should be able to create. Statistics, pattern recognition, these are all aspects of machine learning or, or uh, data analysis. So you can, you can have a statistician also as part of the data science team. A lot of the analysis is purely number crunching and statisticians are very good at that. They have the basics. So if you are from a statistics background, you are a good fit for a data science team. And, and, and I'll share with you my experience of having built a data science team, the kind of people are on board. So I had statisticians, I had people, a couple of guys who are pure statisticians and they were helping doing a predictive analytics. There are also machine learning folks um, who were actually helping build predictive models for a certain different kind of use case. So there is a place for all these kinds of stuff. And there are certain more, um, uh, more evolving uh, kinds of areas like neurocomputing, AI, pure AI, uh, logistics, and all that areas, um, semantics. Those are actually evolving spaces. And their data science starts to merge with uh, AI per se. So then you can, if you are in the space of data science, you can slowly also start thinking that the larger, uh, the cognitive era which is stepping in is, is something that you are uh, ready to embrace because a lot of AI will have many of these as core components. A lot of AI offerings, a lot of sentient systems that you build will have a lot of uh, data science components built into because ultimately if you want to make smart systems, smart systems act on data and, and then it is basically smart data and smart data is when you take the data, you do some process on top of it, you put some uh, rules, you put some learnings, you put some pattern recognition on top of the data that you have and you come up with insights. That is what smart data is. So essentially a data scientist is still going to be very relevant in the new era of cognitive computing that is coming through. With that, I'll also slightly go into what analytics is all about. So this is slightly higher level because data science ultimately is about the ability to analyze your data, your um, ecosystem, if I would say it that way, and make a sense out of it. So if you look at the matrix that I have here, you have a basic analytics. So you can call it BI, in the business it is called BI, which is essentially looking at what has happened in the past and creating nice charts. Right? You can call it as performance management. What was the year on your sale for this particular store? Or what, what, how, was, how was the stock performed in the 
two quarters or three quarters, right? So those kinds of analysis essentially are hindsight, right? So this is hindsight analysis. Your events have happened. Now you're making some um, sort of high level understanding and creating reports out of them for analysis purpose. But the more interesting stuff, the more interesting stuff and really why um, companies are setting up data science teams is for what is coming below, right? It is essentially to understand and make decisions around what is happening at this point. So you call it a real-time analysis. For instance, if you are an e-commerce company and you want to sort of figure out um, how to convert a customer who is on your platform, can you give a coupon while the preferred person, he or she, is browsing on your platform? And the coupon should be relevant to the interest they have shown while they have been browsing on the platform. And that is what, what is happening at this moment. What is the context of the interaction of this particular individual? And in that context, can I give some inducements at, in, in the way of a coupon that is relevant so that the customer, instead of just browsing and going away, now starts to purchase, is converted, right? So that is where what is happening at this moment comes in. Then comes what will happen. This is more prediction. This is more forecasting. All the rest of the three, what, what will happen, what is most likely to happen, and what might happen if we were to tweak the system. These are all forward-looking. These are all forecasting. Uh, and, and oftentimes, um, in the industry, we really do not go there. It's essentially at this moment. That is where most of it stops, and particularly because the rest of the stuff is slightly more harder to anticipate, and industry doesn't have those needs. So data science teams are expected to sort of do some predictions, but they're all near-time predictions. It's what will happen in this quarter, or what will happen in the next big sale that we are going to do, what numbers are we going to see. And those are predictions, but uh, it could also be an extrapolation of your last year's sales. So it, it is a fine line there, but the rest of the stuff is slightly more uh, esoteric at this point. A lot of the data science teams do not engage in those. I would say those start going into the domain of AI uh, per se, as to what is it uh, in terms of what is likely to happen, how can we change the ecosystem. But this is something that, um, as data scientists, you want to keep in mind that this is the five big analytics problems or the types of analysis that people expect you to do. And oftentimes, uh, people will just ask you to say what will happen. And then it is essentially a very short interval in terms of timeline. They're not talking for next week, next month. Unlikely that you can predict something five years down the line with like great accuracy. Uh, and finally, my last slide is, is something that uh, since many of the folks here are interested in taking a course and, and trying to become a data scientist or convert their career into a data science oriented one, just a setting on what makes you a good data scientist. Like everything else, it is about continuously working in this area, in this area continuously being involved, taking problems, to continuously uh, engaging in solving these problems over a long period of time. So uh, while getting the basics right is important and understanding the tools of the trade which are more prevalent at this point of time is also in, important, what it takes is that you need to have a good understanding. I remember that particular chart I showed. You need to have a domain understanding. You need to be able to communicate what you have very well with your customers, stakeholders. You need to be able to work as a team because you won't have all the skills necessary for a good data science team. So you will have to work with others who have complementary skills. But what it essentially entails is that a good data scientist is somebody who has been working in the space for about four to five years. And this is coming from a survey of uh, KDD, which is the area if you are a data scientist, you should be involved in that space called knowledge discovery and data mining. It's a, a group of individuals globally who look at data mining and, and, and particularly they become the data scientists going forward. Then their understanding these are experts who have been asked as to how do you think or how do you assess a good data scientist? What, how many years would it take for somebody to be a good data scientist? And the answer, if you look at it, is the median about four to five years. So if you have been practicing for three to four years, you can then start calling yourself a sort of an expert data scientist. 